Creativity is an addiction. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So let's turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. James Notway, an amazing photographer. This man has found a way to capture the darkest of times in the most dangerous places. He says that he gives silent people a place to be visible. The part of the story that grabbed my heart the most was his drive to reach into the silent people who are visible. It can't be traced to certain groups or communities. We're surrounded by silence caused by stories that some may relate with or just set aside. James just happens to document the journeys. His photographs are separate stories, which we can all participate either by admitting our own silence or supporting the outreach that can help create sound in another person's heart. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. My goal every day is to be a silent wolf, to be able to look at life to study it, to enjoy it, to be grateful for it, write a bunch of stuff down, and then we get to have a conversation. This is The Daily Mess. How do we measure what's right and what's wrong? Is it really based on what we don't have but still want? Now, research says it's based on opinion. Morally right requires 51% majority. Knowing the ethical values of right and wrong, usually it's a small voice inside our hearts that determines, yeah, that's right, or no, that's wrong. I can't help but wonder how many inner voices are truly wrong. How many indictments does a person have to receive before realizing, yep, I was wrong. That's not the case in today's world. It's become clear that the more you're not right, the more popular you're becoming. Like a Hollywood movie, the bad guy or girl is always the cool hangout. The confidence to buck the system. How can anybody be wrong if the inner voice sees it as right? Accountability has been redefined. What is right? What is wrong? Me doing these podcasts could be very wrong because it's so not like radio. And I've spent my entire life in radio since the age of 14. And if you want to count my bedroom radio station, well, that started when I was about 10. But is podcasting wrong or right? Somebody asked me that question on Facebook last night. They said, you're not in radio anymore? And my comment back, and I'm kind of regretting it today, is I said, in podcasting, I'm doing more than what I ever did in radio. It just seems so small. I'm enjoying where I am. Was that wrong to say? Or was it right to say? What about the daily walks that we take? I'm one of those people that takes the bag with me. When my dog does what my dog does, I pick it up. Now, It's all gooey and kind of, you know, and it doesn't smell well. Does my body say, dude, that's wrong. You don't do that. And yet the right side of my mind goes, yeah, yeah. You don't want to leave that for someone to step in that. Now that would be wrong. How do you measure what is right and wrong? In my daily writing, I keep a defrag journal and the defrag journal is really just me asking myself questions. There are many times that I call myself out. I say, no, you're wrong. Well, now it's going to affect my mindset, my mood swings. Will I be depressed? Will I be happy? What is right? What is wrong? And can we please work this out? This is the reason why I created the Defrag Journal, so I could figure out the true balance. Remember, 51% majority is required for morally right. But is that right? Because what happens if they're wrong? I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.